Hey everyone, Ryan here, and in this video, I'm going to bring you the latest information on every LEGO Star Wars 2024 set rumor in release date order. So if you like the way that sounds, make sure you hit the like button, and let's get into it with the January 1st release date, which is kind of a disappointing one here with only four potential releases, two of them being poly bags, the first of which the 30680 AAT poly bag with 75 pieces for $5. The other poly bag potentially releasing is 30685, but we don't even know what ship it will be. It could potentially be a smaller version of the delayed skeleton cruise ship just given that we don't know what it is it might just be something more secretive unlike the AAT but given the skeleton cruise ship was delayed the poly bag may also be delayed and it might not be releasing January 1st more exciting for January 1st and definitely coming out on January 1st at the 75372 $30 215 piece clone troopers versus battle droids battle pack now given it's a prequel set it of course has a lot of fans excited and the figure selection definitely seems to meet that level of excitement with one shock trooper three regular phase two clone troopers, two regular battle droids, and three super battle droids. I mean, it is a figure selection for the ages, and at $30, given that it feels like it's two battle packs meshed into one, feels like a really good value, because if you bought two battle packs today separately, it would cost you $40, but now you're getting two and one for 30. So I think the value for money is something that might be getting underrated with the excitement of this set as well, and of course, that's something we can't really know until we have in hand, so in my final review on the channel, I'll talk more about that, of course, but the builds for this also do did leak since the original leak of this set and it said that for the clone trooper side of things there's supposed to be a bark speeder that can seat two clone troopers kind of like we saw with the original clone trooper battle pack in 2007 and then taking from that 2007 droid battle pack is a stap speeder and we haven't had a stap speeder in lego star wars i believe since 2015 so this is a very welcome return i've been waiting and asking for uh, that build to come back because it's just something that makes so much sense in so many of the sets that they have been doing so it's nice to finally see it being brought back here and the other separatist build is a small Octoptara Tri Droid. The other set on January 1st is one that I don't think a lot of us are going to be interested in. It's the 75384 Crimson Firehawk. This is from Young Jedi Adventures. It's a four plus junior set. It's $50 with 136 pieces. It is definitely going to be a pass for a lot of people. It's supposed to feature three characters with Nubs, Nash Durango, and RG83. It also has a speeder bike that could be stored within the Crimson Firehawk and a small market booth, which I think is kind of interesting. Now, Lego Star Wars gets a bit more interesting in March of 2024. This is kind of where the 25th anniversary stuff starts to seep into some of the sets. It appears the Lego Star Wars helmet subline has been completely replaced by Lego Star Wars midi scale sets as last year we got three Lego Star Wars helmet sets and one midi scale set and this year we're getting zero helmet sets and three midi scale sets and as a longtime fan of midi scale I'm very happy to see it back but it's also sad to see helmets just completely gone because they are also a very good subline but it does appear helmets are just out the window at this point in time not to say they can never come back again because of course that door is always open much like it was with midi scale but for the time being lego star wars helmet sets are kaput now the three midi scale sets in question here we have the 75375 80 921 piece millennium falcon midi scale build we have the 75376 70 654 piece tantive 4 midi scale build and we have the 75377 $53, yep, yeah, that's a weird price, 557 piece invisible hand midi scale build. Now for all three of these sets, it is said that they will come with a brick built stand. I. I don't know why I say brick built. Everything in Lego is brick built, but it's a brick built stand and also a 25th anniversary brick. So these three sets are going to get that extra little bit of special treatment, which is nice. I love the idea of them all coming with stands to give them a little bit of a more dynamic display look. I think that's going to be fantastic. And there are no features said to be within the Tantive or the Millennium Falcon, but quite surprisingly, Lego Star Wars is going the extra mile with one of the prequel sets in the Invisible Hand, where the build is set to split in half like you see in the movie and there's supposed to be a hangar with jedi starfighters of course yellow for anakin and red for obi-wan although with as small as a midi scale set is it's probably just studs inside but like it's still pretty cool that they're giving you the little details i should amend that the rumor technically is hangar for Jedi Starfighters, not Hangar with Jedi Starfighters, so, you know, they might not include the red or yellow stud. Now, the next two sets are the ones that include our bonus 25th anniversary minifigures. First up, we have the 75379 $100, 1,050-piece R2-D2 build. The build is said to be feature pack though, with a moving head, periscope, tools, and it, of course, has a little display plaque like we see with the other buildable characters, and, of course, your minifigure is R2-D2, but, of course, with these, 
Hades, there's the extra 25th anniversary minifigure, and in this case, it's said to be Darth Malak. And the other 25th anniversary minifigure set is said to be the 75387 Tantive 4 hallway. This one at $55 with 502 pieces. It already included five minifigures, so it's actually getting a sixth minifigure. It's supposed to have Darth Vader, two stormtroopers, and two rebel troopers to occupy that hallway, and the sixth figure is fives. Clone Trooper 5 is going to be a very exciting addition to this set for many people. I think, you know, stylistically looks for Lego figures these days. That Arc Trooper helmet from 2012 would be ideal to me. I think it just looks better than what they're doing now for figures with antennas. I just, you know, doesn't look good compared to what we could have had or have had in the past. As far as the features, though, for that Tantive 4 hallway, we have quite a few as this is not a diorama set. It's supposed to have levers that blast open the doors and topple the characters over. And another rumor that was floating out there is that this build is built specifically to be modular and so that you can add more onto them pretty easily. I did this with the Dark Trooper set, but you know, you had to actually do it. But I think the rumor I had seen is that this is like literally built, you know, possibly with Technic pins already ready to go to just attach builds to one another. I, you know, I don't know if that's true or not, but that was just one of the rumors floating out there and something that I talked about in a previous video. So that March 1st wave is very 25th anniversary focused. And as we move into the May 1st set releases, we're all over the place. I don't know if any of these sets are going to have 25th anniversary anything right now. There's no specific rumors tied to them having that, I believe. But we'll start off with a couple of Brickhead sets. Given set number 40675 and 40676, we know nothing about these Brickhead sets. Your guess is as good as mine. I'll wager an Ahsoka and Anakin dual pack from the Ahsoka show maybe or Thrawn and Ahsoka. I don't know. I'd love to see something from the Ahsoka show with some of those iconic key characters from the show. But again though we literally know nothing about these brickheads. The next set is 40686 and it's supposed to be the May 4th promo and it's mid-November 2023 as I'm filming this. Lego in the last month, month and a half has released I don't know a half dozen to a dozen promos that have a build and minifigures included. including including one for the Avengers Tower that has a build and four minifigures. What I'm asking for for May 4th is pretty simple. A build and a figure. It's not that hard. Just do it every year. It's a simple thing. You get the build, you get the figure. Everyone's happy. Everyone wins. It's beautiful. Life goes on. Next question. Wait, next <laughs> set number coming out on May 1st is 75378. It's Grogu's Escape. I think this is one of the best sets of the year for sure. Uh, short of the helmets, maybe on the two included shock troops. We'll have Grogu and Kellerin Beck. I gotta stop myself here because Bricklicker said that the rumored figure selection for this set was actually wrong, that it won't be two shock troopers, whether it'll be a shock trooper and a 501st, a couple of the Naboo guards, some other combination thereof. I just don't have that information to share with you, but apparently the other two figs in the set won't be two shock troopers. The Bark Speeder and Yoda's Pram are gonna be the included builds. This is definitely gonna be a set that everyone's gonna wanna pick up to recreate a pretty cool scene from The Mandalorian Season 3. Oh, and it's $30, but we don't currently have a rumored piece count for it. Now, the next set is 75380, the $70, 718-piece Bunta Eve Pod Race Diorama. Of course, the 25th anniversary of episode one. It will probably have an episode one 25th anniversary brick. I can only imagine they've been doing the bricks for a few years now with all sorts of things. I just think that'll be one of the things, although it's technically not an official rumor with this one. That's just me giving my idea. The next Phantom Menace set is a 75381, $70 buildable droidica. We do not have a piece count to accompany that one though. And I think I did say in one of my previous rumor videos that I thought it would come with like a small droidica build. But if we look to a build like the probe droid, as some people pointed out in my comments, maybe the droidica doesn't come with a figure here. It might just be a standalone buildable droidica, which I'm cool with. I was just kind of excited for a smaller version of one again. So we'll have to wait and see, I guess, on that. The rumors for May and onward are a little bit more shaky at this point, it seems. And it's currently also unknown if the buildable droidica and the Bunta Eve pod race diorama will include 25th anniversary minifigures or not. At this point, there's just no rumor of such a thing existing. So it could just be the case that we're not close enough to the release date that we would know, or it could be the case that it, they're just not gonna be in a set like that. We just don't know at this point. It could be either or. Finally, though, for May 1st, we have the first UCS set of the year, the 75382 $240 TIE Interceptor. And I'm pretty excited for this one. It's been a long time since they've done a UCS TIE Interceptor. It's been a long time since they've done quite a few UCS sets. I didn't think this was like the one that needed to be done the most. They could have easily passed up on a TIE Interceptor to do a multitude of more 
popular things, I think, like Darth Vader's TIE Advance and a UCS Slave 1. I think every year I talk about those two as like big ones that I think they should be doing. But nonetheless, we're getting a UCS TIE Interceptor, which is an exciting prospect because it's still a good thing to make a UCS set of again. Now, as far as the minifigure or minifigures in this set, there's no current rumor about it. But in my personal opinion, you know, just looking at the field of Lego Star Wars, they could do something as simple as a TIE pilot, and that would be the only figure in the set. We saw this with the 2015 UCS TIE fighter. There's nothing wrong with that being the only figure in the set. It'd be a very adequate and good figure with nice arm printing and detail. Could be nice and simple and just work, or they could go with something a little bit more spicy like a Season 3 Moff Gideon. However, they might not need to because they apparently will have a Season 3 Moff Gideon in a much cheaper set later in 2024. It's now later in 2024 with the June 1st LEGO Star Wars releases, starting with set 75373, the Mandalorian versus Super Commando Battle Pack. It's going to be $20 with 108 pieces. We don't know anything about the builds, but we do know the four minifigures included. First up, Kashka Reeves. Well, that's one of the seven deadly sins, a named character in a battle pack. A standard blue Mandalorian is said to be the second minifigure, and two Imperial Super Commandos from Season 3 of The Mandalorian are said to be the third and fourth figures. A really good versus battle pack overall. A lot of people are going to love picking this one up. It just definitely gets hurt on the army building side of things when you include named characters in battle packs, and I will continue to say that I don't like it until the end of time because I just don't think it's the way that battle packs should be run. I really wish they would bring back those minifigures packs and use them for characters like Koshka Reeves at a very cheap and affordable price for $15. She would fit right in nicely there. But anyway, I digress. Should be a great battle pack. Enjoy it if you're into it. I just probably won't be partaking in the army building with this one. Next set is 75374, $130, 1,325 pieces, skeleton crew ship. Now this one was supposed to release on January 1st. It did get delayed because the skeleton crew show got delayed. I believe the figures selection for this one is supposed to be Jude Law along with four of the kids that he is bringing along in the show. I know very little about the show. I don't even think there's like a real public trailer out there yet. So there's definitely a lot about this set that we just don't know about. And if it hadn't been delayed, I think we would know a lot more about it, but I think it'll be a few more months before we find anything real out. One of the coolest sets of the summer seems to be the 75386 $40, 289 piece Imperial Bunker from The Mandalorian Season 3. This one should be a best seller given that it's a pretty neat scene from The Mandalorian in season three, and it's gonna have four amazing minifigures with Paz Vizsla, two Praetorian guards, and Moff Gideon. That's just killer there. I think the biggest downside is only including two instead of three Praetorian guards, but as long as the quality of figure is there for these guys, I think I'm going to be pretty happy overall. I think Paz Vizsla and the two Praetorians are a lock to be very good minifigures. I think the biggest question mark here for figures is that season three Moff Gideon. This could be an all-time great minifigure at a $40 price tag, or if they end up deciding to reuse the Gar Saxon helmet, it could just be a pretty derpy looking figure that's not as cool as it could have been. And so at this point, we just don't know. They could also theoretically use the standard Mandalorian helmet with no horns at all. And I do think given how big the horns are for Gar Saxon's helmet, it would be better to use the one without horns than the one with the horns that just look awful for what it's supposed to be. It's definitely a balancing act there if you're LEGO Star Wars. I mean, ideally you're gonna make a new mold for this helmet specifically because that's just what you should do to make it the thing that it is. As far as the build goes, I mean, with 289 pieces, there's not a lot you can do, but it still should be a pretty cool little, I guess, platform area with a little doorway, I assume. There's no rumor about the build. It's just like, it is the bunker. Like that's the name of the set. Now the next two sets, I think it's worth talking about in the same breath. We have the 75390 and 91 respectively 16 and $13 Luke Skywalker mech and Captain Rex's Y-Wing Micro Fighter. So some nice cheap sets for that June summer lineup. And the minifigures for these are specifically why I think it's important to talk about them in the same breath. For the Luke mech, we get a Luke Skywalker pilot that is specifically said by leakers to not be the same Luke Skywalker that we saw in the UCS X-Wing in 2023. And for Captain Rex, it is said to be the exact same Captain Rex as we saw in the UCS Venator, which I think it's important to note that LEGO went out of their way to proclaim exclusivity for purchasers of the UCS Venator in the instruction manual, while the same was not done for the UCS X-Wing. I do not fault anyone for being excited about Captain Rex, the UCS version, the best version that LEGO makes. Again, not the best version they can make. In a $13 set, you should absolutely be excited about it. It's a really exciting prospect. 
like I think that's really good for for so so many people and in the same breath I think it's really really bad that Lego is lying to fans. And I don't really see a point to like trying to argue amongst fans about who's right and who's wrong because at the end of the day fans that are getting their $13 Captain Rex should be excited and fans that got lied to should be upset at Lego and neither of the fans should be upset at each other because that's dumb stupid and dumb. Oh and the microfighter will have 99 pieces but we don't know how many pieces Luke's mech will have at this point but based on the 2023 mechs probably about 150. Now for the August 1st releases we don't know what sets are coming out here yet there's been all sorts of things being thrown around on the internet with fake leaks right now which is a whole problem that I covered in another video that I'll put up here right now. But there do seem to be some legitimate price points floating out there right now for the August 1st line with $40, $170, $80, $90, and $150. So you can let your imagination run wild as to what these could be because they could quite literally be anything. Moving on to September 1st, like clockwork, we should see our 2024 advent calendar release for $45. And finally, likely on October 1st, but you know, give or take two weeks, you never know with early VIP access and certain things, they could just also move the date, but a UCS Jabba's sail barge should be coming in 2024 as the big UCS set for the year. Now, there is a leaked image that does exist of this set, and it definitely calls into question what the final price will be, because the context in which the image leaked was actually a survey in which LEGO was asking participants how much they would pay for different LEGO models pictured. And within the survey, they described the Jabba's sail barge as having 6,500 pieces, but the accompanying picture, and I've looked at a lot of Lego sets in my life, I'm pretty sure that Jabba Sail Barge build did not have 6,500 pieces. So a little mind game going on kind of with the survey participants, but it also affects the way that we have to perceive this rumor, I think, because they're saying 6,500 pieces. The picture of the build is probably like 2,500, 3,000 pieces. I don't know, just throwing a shot in the dark there, maybe 4,000 at best, certainly not 6,500. And so there's a big price discrepancy there. It could be a $700 set or it could be a $350 set. I personally lean towards the idea that they should make this a smaller, somewhat cheaper $350, $400 max UCS set. I think that would fit nicely. You can still include tons of figures and characters, plenty of space for minifigs and characters. I mean, the existing play sets of Java's Sail Barge in today's world would cost about $140. $40, $150. And what you can do with double that or two and a half times that is quite a lot as far as interior space goes and including details from the film and just making a nice displayable UCS model. I think there's a lot they can do, you know, akin to a UCS ATAT where you have a beautiful display build and a beautiful playable, maybe not playable is the right word, but usable interior where you can place figures in and display them nicely. And I think there's just a lot you can do with a UCS Java sail barge for 2020. I think it would be incredibly disappointing if they came out with this set and it was just a two minifig UCS set. You know, I think this is the type of set that has to have an interior and will have an interior and it will have space for figures and they will and should include the figures to fill that space. You know, that's just the way that I'm looking at this job as sale barge. And for reference, we didn't find out what the August 1st, 2023 sets were until about February, March of 2023. So it could be another three, four, five months at the most, probably until we find out what the August 1st, 2024 sets are. And if you don't want to miss when that happens, make sure you hit subscribe with notifications on for this channel. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and let me know which Lego Star Wars 2024 set you're most excited for in the comments section below. See ya.